Swiss drumming. Uh, Mr. Carone, considered by leading basal Swiss drummers as the best foremost authority on Swiss drumming in the United States, will be presenting his clinic in this subject today. Um, most percussionists know that the birth of rudimental drumming was in Switzerland, but most of the percussionists know nothing more than that. The purpose of this Swiss drumming masterclass is, is to complement uh, the Percussive Arts uh, article that, uh, that Lee wrote in uh, January 2010 and clear the mystery of this known but not so known art form. The presentation will show attendees a brief history of Swiss drumming from the 1380s till present, an explanation of uh, carnival or fashnat, the Swiss rope tension, field drum, wood and brass and how they work, the grip, uh, the traditional grip uh, with a slight difference in the right hand, a breakdown of Swiss rudiments, reading, deciphering, and interpreting Swiss notation, Berger and Windsor code, and the live performance of Swiss drumming, and examples that he will actually play for you. Lee's biography. Performing rudimental drummer uh, for 20 years, Lee has been a member and performed in, uh, with such groups as the Old Guard Fife and Drum Corps, 3rd U.S. Infantry Escort to the President, the United States Army Band, Pershing Zone, the United States Coast Guard Band, the Pops Explanade Orchestra, and uh, was the 2007 cast of the Edinburgh Military Tattoo in Edinburgh, Scotland. Scotland. His travels also take him to Basel, Switzerland, where he performs regularly in the Carnival Fashnat uh, with the Clique Sebli, if I'm pronouncing it correctly. In 2009, Lee was the first American to complete in the officials to compete in the in the officials by Strum Drumlin, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, and Fife, uh, which probably means Fife and Drum. Uh, the competition in Basel before Fashnat. Uh, as well as placing in the finals. Um, and when not performing rudimental drumming, Lee is a freelance percussionist performing with the orchestra, the chamber groups, and music theater produ productions throughout New England. Faculty at uh, Indian, uh, Indian Hill Music School and Axiom, a drummer's place, uh, percussion specialist, Weymouth uh, HS, and drum instructor of the William Diamond Jr. Fife and Drum Corps in Lexington, Massachusetts. Uh, Mr. Carone attended the Hart School of Music in the, in the Boston Conservatory. So without any further ado, we would like to introduce to you Mr. Lee Carone. Thank you. I hope you all enjoyed your lunch. <laughs> Give me a second while I set up my high tech sound system. Take your time. Let's see if I can show you. Oh, he was the uh, William Diamond uh, on April 16th, what, 1774. He was the first drummer to do a drum call to call troops to arms on Lexington Green. So uh, this, this Fife and Drum Corps is a uh, dedication to him, and it's actually, this is our 10th uh, year anniversary. So it's a still a fairly young group, and uh, we're starting to kick butt, so it's really exciting. <laughs> uh, actually, before I get started, no, I had some handouts uh, at the front door here. Actually, oh, all right. <laughs> That's going to be awesome, and then we'll, uh, we'll get started. Great. So, and now, for something completely different. This works.
I'm Lee Karen. Swiss drumming is my shtick. So what well, I'm here to discuss Swiss drumming in general, how to read it, how to interpret it, the style of it, the history of it. And uh, just to give you as many examples as possible so that now you can understand it a little bit more. Uh, talking about rudimental drumming. Anyone have an idea of when the earliest record of rudimental drumming is? Date? No? Good guess. Anyone else? 1380. Absolutely. 1380 is one is one of the first records of a fife and drum corps or rudimental drumming, and it's in a picture uh, from Basel, Switzerland, which is pretty much at, at where where the style of drumming came from and where all of our roots came from. Uh, Back in the day, the Swiss army, they were, they were a mercenary army. You know, Switzerland was selling off their army to other countries to fight their battles. So wherever the army goes, who goes with them? The drummers. The drummers do calls, uh, everything, which we heard uh, about an hour ago with the whole three camps of duties. Uh, so what, what do drummers do when they meet other drummers? We like to talk shop, right? So all these drummers, from Switzerland, every time they travel to another country and meet other drummers, they're talking to other drummers and picking up all these little things about different drumming. So pretty much what happened was with all the drummers, Swiss drummers traveling around the world, collecting all this information, they start to turn uh, rudimental drumming into their kind of own thing, picking up other things and spreading it around. Uh, example, uh, uh, a lot of uh, drag rudiments they picked up from France. Uh, a lot of flam rudiments they picked up from the UK. Uh, now, this this whole traveling mercenary army stopped uh, with the French Revolution when, when Napoleon lost, and uh, so Switzerland stopped hiring out their armies. So the drummers stopped traveling around, and this is when Swiss drumming came in to like what we have here, where mil ex-military bands are now DCI course and fucking drum course. Now they have cliques that are not military related, but they like the, 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 the drumming, the camaraderie of it. Uh, so, and that <coughs> leads us to where we are today. Uh, talking about the drums, I'm sure most people are familiar with the standard fossil drum. This guy right here, this is chromed brass. It's not the lightest thing, but I guess it could be heavier. And uh, as you see, the counter hoops are white with uh, black and white alternating stripes. The black and white is actually the color of Basel. Uh, or, and so they like to represent that. If you go to other uh, cantons and counties in Switzerland, uh, they tend to be red, which just sig signifies a different location. And also, depending on which way the stripes go, this way or this way, uh, with dictate where someone's from. Uh, but before they had these, these are actually fairly new. These actually didn't come around until maybe mid to late 1800s. Prior to that, they used wood drums with cafets, something of the sorts like this guy. Solid ash, cafet. So you get a meteor sound, right? A little more traditional, if you will, to the ear. Okay. Uh, I don't, I, I don't, I don't know if if any of you guys uh, noticed, but the way I was holding the sticks, right hand, yeah, the right hand, it's kind of funky, right? Yeah, no. Nope. I'm not holding it with the fulcrum between the forefinger and the thumb. <clears throat> it's actually almost like a, this was actually gave me a, a great analogy of it, and it's like like you're holding a hammer, right? Because if you want to play loud, you know, this works, but you get more out of this. So this is the actual way that they do play in Basel. This doesn't exist. Well, it does exist, only in top secret. <laughs> uh, everyone, everyone else plays like this. Uh, and it does, it works, you get a lot of power. It's, it's, it's completely completely uh, different pivot points and fulcrum. And uh, it, it, it took me a little while to get used to it, but at least now I feel comfortable playing it, finally. Uh, well, yes? Can you take questions? Absolutely, please. Oh, sorry, well, uh, your exercise is teaching your local leaders, right? Do you teach them that, that, that style? No, I, I teach them American. Okay. Because only, I, only, I only hold this, I like this, when I play a, a Swiss drumming. Okay. Everything else, rudimental, orchestral, anything, drum set. Can you show us where they came from? Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's, it's actually it's, it's in two places. 
The first one is in the middle finger, okay? The second one is right in here. And this, the second, uh, this one is kind of where you get that finesse. Back in here is where you get rolls and punching for power. Yeah, and it's not up. You gotta flatten the hand out. Yeah. Now, the oak note that you just played along with that fight thing isn't, isn't, doesn't necessarily sound like it's pure Swiss. Right, it's not. It's, uh, it's it's almost like a hybrid, which is why I like to start with that piece because it's it's a tune we all know, yeah. and and it's it's a standard six eight, uh, but it does have a little quirkiness to it with a lot of the tap rolls and some of the displaced flams. Uh, but but we're, we're definitely going to hear some other funky things too. All right. Uh, so talking about Carnival or Fasnacht, which I'm, I'm sure who, who hasn't heard of Fasnacht? No one. Great. So. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but I've seen you there. Do you mean those potato <coughs> donuts that we eat around? Yeah, no. I've heard of I've heard of those, but <laughs> <laughs> but uh, just a quick overview on Fasnacht. It's it is said to be the second largest carnival in the world, next to Rio, which I could definitely believe it. They say there's about between twelve and fourteen thousand participants and hundreds of thousands of spectators just in the old portion of the city. So it's probably not, maybe a, not even a square mile radius, maybe a half square mile or a little bit bigger that all this takes place. It's for three days, always starts Monday after Ash Wednesday. It is not a religious carnival. It actually started ooh, 800 years ago, roughly, to uh, mainly you know stick it to the Pope and uh, to not pay the taxes, all right? So if you've ever been to Basel, there's two parts of Basel, Gross Basel and Klein Basel. What goes through it? The Rhine River. And at that point, there's only one bridge to cross it, the old Middle Bridge or Middlebrucke. So what you'd have to do is, if you've ever seen pictures of this, there's a little building in the middle of that bridge, which is actually a toll house. So you would have to pay a toll every time you went over it. How do you not pay tolls or taxes or something like that on a religious holiday, right? So what they did is they organized Fasnacht to not pay tolls to go back and forth over the bridge, which is why Fasnacht is always going back and forth, marching around almost aimlessly between both parts of the cities. And then it just evolved into this huge, huge carnival, which has probably only been this big for about 50 years. Up, up, you know, even at the turn of the century, 1900s, it was still not as big, but was pretty big, but just not as many spectators. And, uh, and, you, and you get tons and tons of different uh, cliques or, or chords marching around, some small, some large, so like the clique that I play in, uh, I'm a member of uh, Sadie Clique, we have 37 snare and 47 piccolo, and that's just in our main group. There's generally three groups, or three sections to a large clique in Basel. You get the Junge Guard, which is the beginners, Stamm, which is the average age, which I'm in, then you get the Ulti Guard, or the old guys, right? And uh, generally twice or three times throughout Carnival in a large clique like this, all portions of the clique march together. So you're talking you know, 100, 150 drums, a couple hundred piccolo. It's, it's amazing. And, and, the, and the lines, it stretches for two blocks. Absolutely insane. But then you also, like I said, you also get smaller groups of maybe three piccolos and one snare. Okay? And, uh, and that's pretty much Fasnacht. <laughs> okay? So going back, talking about the grip. I'm going to uh, play a piece called Reslifer, which uh, is a good demonstration of uh, the grip. And if you look out in the, in the handout, it's actually number one. Is anyone not familiar with reading burger notation? All right. <laughs> All right. So you never know. <laughs> so in burger notation, uh, of course, we, we kind of briefly heard who, who uh, Dr. Fritz Burger was. He, besides from being a phenomenal drummer at the turn of the century, he was also the, the, the pioneer of trying to write in musical notation, mathematic notation of what the drumming is. Before that, if you look below, an example, uh, an example two, right? Yeah, that is Windsor Code or hieroglyphs. That is generally what people read. And generally that is not meant, you don't generally hand that out and say learn it. Someone shows it to you and that's your reference, okay? But, and so it's actually starting with the Windsor Code, if you look at it, 
You see all the little boxes? Each box is worth one B. Okay? So in this in this particular winter code, the dotted line or the slash line going down separates beats one and beats two. Then you have the full measure line. Okay? So Windsor code, right hand is on the bottom, left hand is on top, okay? The dot, that means a flam, or in, in, uh, in uh, Swiss German, it's a schlepp. Uh, and then you see a five with the dot in it, it's a flam five, okay? And then the single lines are taps, then we have some more flams. So if you look at that, if you kind of analyze that, starting with the five, the two lines, and the two flams, and if anyone have an idea of what kind of combination two rudiment set is, it's a flam five into a pad of flaw fog, right? So now if you look at there is no, there really is no release of the five, kind of, yes, no, but <laughs> the ties, it, the way it's written in winter code, it has flaws, okay? And uh, oh, uh, and w one more thing uh, before I move on to the burger. If you look at the next uh, box over, the solid dots with the lines coming out of the top, those are duplays. Now, a duple is pretty much, it's an inverted flam tap, or invert, right? So, here in the States, we play inverts. Pretty straightforward, even sixteenths. Now, in Swiss drumming, the duple, it is literally a tap before the flam, and it has this kind of swing feel to it. Okay? It's, it's not purely swung, but it's not straight. It's in between. It has this little lilt. Uh, yeah, so moving on to the burger notation. If you look back to number one, now the right hand is on top and the left hand is on bottom. Any note head that has a line coming out of the top is, uh, is a flam. And then if you see in the second measure with the eighth notes, you see the little flag coming out of the top of the note head. That is a duple. Now when you see that, the tap actually comes before that note. So it takes a little getting used to reading it, but it generally works. And everything else is pretty straightforward. Uh, if you look at uh, first measure, and of one, the five stroke roll, you see there's a line coming out of the top of that note head. So there's your flam five, okay? So what I'm gonna do to show you huge dynamic range and use of the right hand grip, I'm gonna play through this tune, a Reslifer, which starts off with a very huge right hand accent. And when we have big right hand accents in Basel, we don't start from here. We start from here. And we really, we, we, we slam it. Why? Because Fasnacht is only three days. It's the most three wonderful days of the year. And if you're gonna play your drum, why don't you play it, right? So, so they, they tend to, 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 pardon my term, but beat the piss out of their drums. But I, I think it's right. <laughs> All right, so. Here is Reese Lifer. <laughs> 